Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're going to see how to build a macro in Roll20 that lets us tick progress clocks with the click of a button. Note that a pro account will be required to do what I'm about to show you. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. In games like Blades in the Dark and Scum and Villainy, a progress clock is used to track the party's effort against a particular obstacle, or to track the approach of impending trouble, or to track a character's progression against a given task. So for example, a party that's trying to sneakily infiltrate a lord's manor may have a guard alert clock that gradually ticks up depending on how things go, and if it fills, the guards sound the alarm and come looking for the PCs. Or maybe there's a clock that represents the work a character is doing while they're crafting a light blade, and when the clock fills, they've successfully built it. The Roll20 implementation of these systems provides you, the GM, with multi-sided tokens to represent progress clocks of varying complexity. For example, a four-part clock represents a challenging task, whereas a 12-part clock is something really complicated. And the respective games will give you these nice pages with instructions that show how to tick the clocks. Basically, you right-click on the clock, you choose multi-sided, and then you choose your side, tick the clock up or down depending, choose, and there you go, now we have filled in a new segment on our clock. And this is great, but count the number of actions I have to perform in order to tick that clock. First, we right click on it, that's one. Then we move down to multi-sided, that's two. The multi-sided menu doesn't open until we click on it, so that's three. Then we go to choose side, that's four. We have to click on choose side, so that's five, then we move the slider, that's six, and then we click choose, that's seven. So seven actions to tick this one segment. That's a lot of actions. And even if you say, well, I wouldn't count the selections as actions, fine, that's still five clicks you have to perform to tick this one segment. So what we're gonna do is build a macro that reduces that down to two clicks. Now in order to do this, we're going to need to install a mod called Token Mod. Token Mod comes to us from the arcane scriptomancer himself, the Aaron. Aaron, thank you for everything that you do for the community. And Token Mod is what's going to allow us to programmatically tick the clock. Now, if you've never installed a mod before, what you want to do is come in here to your mod library, in the drop-down, search for Token Mod, you'll be able to add it into your game, and then you're good to go. So let's jump back into the game and let's write some code. So I'm just gonna swing over my trusty notepad plus plus window here. And the code for the macro is gonna look like this, where this command here, exclamation point token mod, this says that we are invoking token mod. And then we are setting the current side property of a multi-sided token. And instead of setting it to a number, like setting it to side one, side two, or side three, what we're doing is we're saying, plus, which means advance to the next side of the multi-sided token. So if we take this right now, copy it, and highlight our clock, and then I paste in this command, you see that we advance up one. So this is our macro to advance the clock, but we may also want a way to reduce the number of segments in the clock. Well, for that, we're just gonna copy this macro, and we're gonna change that plus to a minus. And now what that's gonna do is set the current side of the token to the previous image. So if we copy this, select our clock, and run this, you see we reduce the amount of filled segments by one. So now we have our macros done. So to actually put them into Roll20 as macros, what we're gonna do is copy the code, we're gonna go over to the collections tab here, we're gonna add a macro, and we're gonna say, okay, our macro's name, we're gonna call this uh, tick up, paste in the code, save that, and then you can put that in the bar, like I have down here, and then with the clock selected, we can tick up and fill in the clock. We can do the same thing. We wanna say tick down, copy and paste our code in here, and then save that, put it in the bar, and then that will reduce the clock. Now at this point, I'm sure there's somebody watching who's gonna ask, hey, is it possible to have Roll20 prompt you whether you want to tick it up or down so you can do this with just one button in the interface? And the answer to that is yes, and I will show you how to write the code to do that, but I will say I don't necessarily advise that because it's gonna be something like this, where we go one click, 
and then two clicks to bring up the macro and then a click either to tick the clock up or if you're ticking down. So basically what I'm getting at here is you're adding more actions by putting in this modal into the equation. So we go from having a two click operation to a three or four click operation and you're not saving yourself that much when you do it like this. So just saying, yes, it can be done. I'll take this down right now. And you see, okay, the clock went down, so it works. The code for this is going to look like this, where we have the exact same sort of token mod command. It's just now we have this prompt right here. And what this prompt does is it asks the player, do you want to click up or down? So if I do that again, you see right here, adjust clock. This is the text right here. And then the pipe is showing us our first option, in this case, up. And the comma means that when we select up, what we're actually sending into roll 20 is a plus. So effectively, when you select up, it makes the command look like this under the hood. And if we select down, again, we have the pipe that denotes there's a new option here in the drop down menu. So down is displayed. If we select down, we're going to put in the minus sign, which effectively turns the command into this. So this will work. You can certainly do this, but again, it is adding more actions into the operation. And that's what we were trying to reduce in the first place. All right. So now one other thing to mention here is that the macro is just advancing to the next side of the multi-sided token. And when you get to the last side, it starts over again. So we actually loop back around to the first side. So when I click clock up again, it's going to clear the clock back to its empty state. And these macros will also work to track progress on other multi-sided tokens. So like here we have a gauge that's tracking our party's heat level. And this is the same thing. It's another multi-sided token. So if we say tick up, we can fill in another bar on the heat meter. If we say tick down, we can reduce it. Same deal with wanted, tick up, tick down, and you're good to go. Now, the nice thing is these macros will work on any multi-sided token in your game. So right here in the downtime section, this text is actually a multi-sided token and each side gives instructions for a different stage of the downtime process. So instead of right clicking on this and multi-sided and all that, you can just click on it and then tick up to go to the next stage of the downtime process. Your characters complete the second stage, tick up, do the third stage, tick up, go to the fourth stage, and then tick up again to go back to the first step, and now you're ready to go for your next job. And these images that you see over here are also multi-sided tokens. And if you right-click on them and say multi-sided, choose side, the little preview that you get here is so tiny, I can't tell what these images are. But by clicking on them and using tick up, it's way easier for me to scroll through and see exactly what these images are and choose whichever one I like best or think is appropriate for whatever situation my characters are in. So there you have it, ticking progress clocks in Roll20. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, happy gaming.